You remember we discussed, we were discussing the fermionic topology theory, we discussed the network works in Ramon sector, we discussed bosonization roughly, and then we discussed uh, the state of data correspondence in this, in this area. Uh, we want to now continue with our discussion of, uh, uh, of bosonization, uh, but to do it a little in a, in a slightly more systematic manner. So I first want to make a proper claim for a duality between two well defined topology uh, theories, and then we'll see later how this is used in the study of strength. First, I try to the claim. Okay. Okay. The boson, the periodic boson, with, with radius of compactification, r is equal to square root 2 times r self d. This is a well-defined conformal field theory, and this is isomorphic to uh, a certain projection that we will study, to a certain projection of a theory of uh, two three thirty. Okay. Not exactly of the set of two radius, but root two times. Root two times the set. in terms of identification of H. Okay? The self-dual radius was R is equal to square root alpha. And therefore H is equal to square root 2. Is this clear? Radius of H The radius, of, if the radius of x was square root alpha prime, the radius of h is square root 2. Yeah. So in h language, square root 2 is equal to self dual radius. We are interested in r is equal to square root 2 times self radius. Self dual radius. So ra radius of compactification of h is simply. So we have PL uh, R is 
equal to 1 by square root 2 alpha prime n plus minus 2 that. Do you see? By putting r is equal to square root 2 alpha. Okay? Now let, let us write the same vertex operator in terms of h as e to power i k l h plus k r h l plus k r eta. Okay? So clearly by taking x and putting square root 2 alpha prime by 2 we have k l, k l r is equal to square root alpha prime by 2 p l r Okay, which by uh, uh, by yes, also P L R at the centripetal radius was one by square root two alpha prime n plus minus two w four yeah that was it. So now I multiply this by square root alpha prime by 2 and so I get KLR is equal to half n plus minus 2 w. Okay? The radius of compact division was of h came out to be root 2. No, came out to be 2. Centrifugal radius was root 2. Hmm. And we had root 2 times n. Actually, 2 is the same as 1 because, because of TQF. To say that you have self dual is the square root 2 times self dual radius is the same as saying self dual radius by square root 2. So this equivalent is saying h radius 1. h radius 1 and h radius 2 are the same because square root 2 is the same. Okay, so whether you want to call it 1 or 2, maybe 1 is a nice thing. Uh, okay, but then you'll have to work with the TD will Then it doesn't matter. Okay, so we, we had the KLR is equal to this, and so KLR was equal to that. Finally, let's write down the formula at the cell tool for, at this radius for the dimensions. So delta LR is equal to, it was PL squared, PR squared by 4 alpha prime, but PL, PR was was sorry let's speak there was 2 by square root alpha prime k r k r right so when we do the split p l square uh, we get the alpha prime should cancel out so this one uh, k l and k r
theory compacted by that square root two times self due radius or self due radius divided by square root two. It's the same as this theory. Where you will remember HL Z H uh, zero will be equal to minus one. The alpha prime by two. that we, could, we worked with in the previous lecture. And uh, this theory with this, of this compacted by three goes on as this spectrum. Now I want to just look at the spectrum in, in, uh, in a little more detail. Okay. The first thing to notice is that the dimension in terms of n and r, so delta L is equal to, let's write this up really explicitly, is equal to 1 by 8 delta L from R is equal to 1 by 8 n plus 2w square n minus 2w. I'm 
u is equal to 0. Then we get what? We get e to the power 9 by 8. Sorry, we get e to the power uh, 3, 3 by 2h e to the power i. I three by two H left H up. Okay, this is N is equal to three W is equal to zero. Okay, with dimension uh, nine by two three by two nine by We've also seen that from this point of view, if we hadn't had the last part of the last lecture, we might have been very surprised by, these appear by the appearances of half integer powers of h. But we've seen that e to the power i h by 2 is the vertex operator corresponding to the Roman sector nodes. So psi, you see, if psi is the uh, is uh, e to the pi h and the operator e to the pi h by 2 comma corresponds to the Ramon sector of the ground state. All excited states of the Ramon sector can be built by acting with psi on top of the ground state. So you see the Ramon sector will be the, the sector with vertex operators with half integer powers of h. On the other hand, the NS sector will be the sector with integer powers of h. What we're seeing is that this uh, bosonic theory here has some states in the Roman sector and some states, some states in the NS sector. You see this first vision. Right? Because it's clear just from this formula. Anything, anytime this is odd, anytime n is odd, the state is in the Roman sector. Anytime n is even, the state is in the n sector. So that's, that's clear. So basically what we've got here is a set of states that can be programmed into two paths just depending on whether n is even or odd. And all of those states can be identified, all of these states can be identified as states in either the NF sector or states in the Roman sector. Okay? Now, however, now, however, there's something else that's what. Okay, so firstly, you, you see this summing of the Ramon sector and the NS sector. In this particular case, where we started with the well-defined theory to start with, it was not something we had a choice to do. We're forced to do it. We're looking at the theory, we're seeing that we get both the Ramon. Okay, we're going to do a lot of this kind of thing in string theory. Okay, so it's good to, get, to look at an example where you know what the rules are before. Okay. Now, the next thing about it is that it's, it's, this is still a bit odd. Okay? We're not getting all the states in the Ramon sector. And we're not getting all the states in the other sector. Let's see if we can try to understand that. 
Okay? Um, see, let's look at the Ramon sector. In the Ramon sector, we got either e to the power IHL by 2 times e to the power, uh, times and e to the power IHR by 2. Or we got e to the power minus IHL by 2 and minus IHR by 2. But we didn't get the state which was e to the power IHL by 2 times e to, e to the power minus IHR by 2. That state just did not exist. There was no choice with it. We just follow the rules, that's what we got. Okay? So, you see that what we're getting is some subset of all possible states in the robot set. Now I'm going to give you a rule. G solid C by 2 and minus C by 2. What? Yeah. So you get something. What are we also missing something? Yeah, everybody are missing something. But n equal to 0, w equal to 1 has this. IH. That's IH by 2. Ramon sector is the half integer case. Okay? Now I'm going to give you a rule that these states follow. These, the states that we do get away and then we'll try to check. Define in the Ramon sector the fermion of a state which is equal to the power i alpha l h l time plus alpha r h r. Okay? Let us define the fermion number. Actually, I really want to define minus 1 to the power. So I want to define minus 1 to the power fermion. Let me define that uh, this minus 1 to the power of fermion number to be equal to minus 1 to the power alpha L plus alpha. We know exactly what the state we call it. Well, oh yeah, we just know. Yeah. They're there. That's all. If some over all ends up in that state. No, but the one chapter, what states will come below this. What do you mean you know this? From what calculation? You're saying from firm, the fermion calculation from here? Okay. Yeah, you can just, because you know the whole spectrum, so you can just see what what what, what is. Right? I'm not going to give you a rule that summarizes that, that, that information. Okay? So suppose we take, uh, we, we call this the uh, uh, fermion, minus 1 to the power uh, fermion. Okay? Now, I want to claim that this minus 1 to the power f is always in the macro one sector, is always equal to minus 1. Okay. Firstly, this means, by the way, firstly, that we never get anything naturally. What does this mean? It means we never have half integer on the left and integer on the right. This you see explicitly, right? It's clear. Because the only way you can get half integers is if n is odd. But if n is odd, then both PL and PR are odd. K and PR. So either both numbers are odd or both numbers are equal. Okay? So it's clear by inspection immediately that minus 1 to the power f is either plus 1 or minus 1. Okay? And I'm claiming that in the Roman sector we only get minus 1 to the power f is equal to minus 1. Only such states are right. Okay? Um, which, um, which is to say the following? Okay, is the, which is to say uh, the following? It's totally obvious. It's totally obvious because K L plus K R is n, right? And n for the Ramon sector is okay. So what, what, what I'm giving is, that, I'm just calling this KL and KR. Okay? So, so you, 
you had a question or a comment? If you mark the odd points on the number lines, points which are like reflection of each other, all the points, those will be allowed. So like some points, you see what I'm saying, right? Suppose you mark one. So this is what is one? Yes. Yeah. So take W on the right hand side, W on the left hand side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So all those things will be allowed. But if you take W on the right hand side, but W minus one on the left, that won't be allowed. Because of this formula, K L R. That yeah. will fix everything. That will fix everything. But this is an analytic way of saying it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. No, uh, that's a nice question. Okay. So we have KL because KR is odd. Okay. This is sometimes called um,
pressure or it's analytically, then there's no further restriction. All of these, you know, the, okay, the, the, there's no other restriction on the kind of, uh, the, this summarizes this restriction. Now let's move to the uh, now let's move to the NS NS. Firstly, when I say NS, I mean NS NS. Either both left, either both left and right are one, or both left and right are the NS. Right. Now let's move to the NS NS sector. Okay. In the NS NS sector, what do we see? We see now something else. The rule in the NS and S sector, if we use the same definition of F. Okay, so F once again is, is pi. Is that in the NS and S sector? We have minus 1 to the power F. Let's see how can we see that. It's totally trivial because Kn plus Kr is in, but in the NS NS sector, N is even, and therefore minus 1 to the power f is equal to 1. Okay, so with this definition of the, of the uh, uh, NS NS sector, uh, we say that the states that we get in the NS NS sector are those projected. So that minus one to the f is equal to one. Okay, clear? Okay. So those are the states that we're getting. Those are the states that we get. So the actual final claim is the one. The actual final claim is that the periodic boson with with radius compactification square root two times the centimeter. Is the same thing as the as the fermionic theory. Okay, it's the same thing as the fermionic theory uh, with when you sum both sectors, the NSNS sector and the Raman Raman sector, and impose a particular projection. The projection the projection that you are imposing is that in the NS NS sector, minus 1 to the power f is equal to 1. Whereas in the Raman Raman sector, minus 1 to the power f, where f is defined in this manner, is equal to minus 1. This should be reducible directly from the fact that you're building a boson. I uh, was building it from boson. Right? Why? This projection that there's something got to do with the periodicity. Can you try to make your question a bit sharper? Why this projection? Why this projection? We've seen it. Uh, okay. Uh, why this projection? Good. You see, the underlying reason is as follows. If you had, the underlying reason is well defined in this of the operator product, mutual locality of the operators, slightly connected with Navier. Okay, uh, this was also the you remember when you were studying toroidal compactification of the bosonic uh, of the of the uh, of uh, compactified boson. We got the uh, we got the solution. We got the spectrum in two ways. The first way was we just did it. But the second way is we interpreted. We interpreted it in the following language. We said that the spectrum of uh, momenta form an even set of yeah. And you remember that we deduced that fact. We could deduce that fact essentially from the condition that if you take the OP of one, one vertex operator with another and you take one of the operators around the other, you come back to yourself without being without known. That was essentially sufficient. That statement was essentially enough to undetail uh, that trip by uh, But that, that, that was essentially enough 
to deduce that the spectrum of possible KRs and KRs. We aren't allowed to have whatever we want. Now let's see how that works in Fermi Okay. Suppose I had an operator like e to the power i h by 2, uh, e to the power i i h l by 2, e to the power i h r by 2. And some other uh, Raman sector operator which violates uh, which violates the uh, JS of projection, or which violates this projection condition. So, uh, for instance, suppose I have e to the power i h by 2 and e to the power minus i h r by 2. Suppose both these operators in my spectrum. Okay. Now let us let us compute the op the uh, op of this. I'm just redoing a calculation we did a few weeks ago. Different language. In fact, same calculation because we did it in the bosonic language, and I'm going to redo it in the bosonic language. Okay, but let me just do it just so, just so that you see uh, see how it goes. Um, what's the rule? The rule is one that we use very often. We should from here and here. What factor of z will we get? Well, we pick up two point function of this and this, which is minus log z. But then there's an i with an i, so it's minus 1, so that's a log z. There's a 2 with a 2, so that's by 4. Okay? So here what we get is a z to the 1 fourth. Okay? Now if we got z to the 1 fourth and z bar to the 1 fourth, no problem. Because the phases will cancel. Okay? But what we, what we get here is z to the 1 fourth divided by z bar to the one fourth. That has the same phase as z to the half. Which is a phase. So if you had a theory, you tried to define a theory in which all Raman sector operators are there, it's impossible. The operators will not be mutually wrong. And the way you see this um, without doing operator stuff is if you try to define a partition function for this theory, you will find that it's impossible to make it modulated. Okay, I'm going to say it in. in uh, okay, yeah, I'm going to say it in. in I'm going to say it now in another, in another language. Okay, let, let me say it in another language that will make it simple as well. We have a theory let us suppose that we have a theory um, in which we fix some boundary condition of, of, the, of the fermions we fix some boundary conditions of the fermions as the fermion goes through the space cycle and now I imagine doing a computation of the partition function of my theory on a Euclidean numbers I picked up Euclidean daughters a rectangle also. Make it take easy about it. Okay? Let us suppose that, that we choose some boundary condition. Let me start. To, to start with, I choose the um, uh, to start with, I choose the easiest one. Let me suppose that uh, I choose the boundary condition in which this guy is periodic around this cycle. That's a wrong set. Okay? So suppose we choose periodic and call periodic. Boundary conditions are denote that by plus. Now, if I want to define a path, I want to define the thermal partition for Okay? And I want to define it in a way that's modular invariant. So what's modular invariant? Switching this side to this. The only partition function I can define as modular invariant is this with also, also with a plus. However, that with a plus does not define a thermal partition. Because a thermal partition function for a theory with fermions always has the fermions anti periodic, periodic along the tangent. So this quantity can be defined. It's nice and modular invariant, but it happens to be zero. Okay, zero has many invariance properties that are quite miraculous. <laughs> okay? Um, the reason this is zero is the one. Not quite this, something that 
अक्षर सब आपने निश्चित हुआ चलता है But now remember that this theory has a fourfold degeneracy of vacuum states. Two of these vacuum states have minus one to pi f one. Two of them have minus one to pi f minus two. So the whole partition function is the partition function of the vacuum states plus the oscillators. The oscillators are fine, non-trivial. But the vacuum states carry no energy, so the ones and the minus one just get so we just get zero. Now the way I'm saying it is that uh, you do a partition function. If you've got class and class boundary conditions, there is a zero mode in the path integral. There's a mode that's constant. Any time you've got a fermionic path, path integral that has a zero mode, you can see. Because integral fermionic mode of a number is zero. Okay? So this guy, this kind of path, path integral, defines a nice, well-defined partition function. But it's A is not thermal, B it's zero. It doesn't sound good enough. What we would like is to define this. Right? That's the kind of thing that would define a thermal partition function in the Ramon set. Right? However, how can this be modulated by itself? Because if you flip it, you'll get something like this. Now, what's the interpretation of this? So, clearly, the Ramon sector by itself won't work. What's the interpretation of this? This is the Nebuchadnezzar sector, but with a minus 1 to the power f. Okay? Now, firstly, that's not what we want, but secondly, this is not modular invariant by itself. Because, suppose I take this cycle. Should allow you to flip any cycles. Like we've drawn a rectangular, so it looks less obvious. Should be able to switch to any cycles. And in this cycle, you see, if, if you've got, or any, any of these, let's say one of these diagonal cycles, you've got plus minus here, along the diagonal cycle, you've got minus. So if you use this and this as the basic cycle, this and this as the basic cycle, you'll have boundary conditions with, which are minus minus. So here it only makes sense if you also have a minus minus. And you can easily see that that, is, that closes a minus. There's nothing else you can get. Well, of course, there are only four possibilities. But this guy by itself is not even Plus and plus, fine. But these guys, mix between them. Which is essentially physically. Okay, so you see that just from general principles, if you 
started with the idea that we should write down a partition function, which is modular invariant. You would say that that the only way of doing it is by imposing projection onto the set of states that you naively build out of the knowledge. Precisely this projection, precisely this projection appears in the dual description of the state. Namely, the theory as a free process. As a process. To see this, we have to be in the free association. What? Well, to see that this position has to be there. But the, well, this kind of reasoning hmm. was purely formula. So, what I've been saying over the last five or ten minutes made no reference to those. So there's a fermionic way of saying that something like this should be going on. Mm. Okay? But you know, there are things, we'll do this kind of reasoning a little more sophisticated way in 10 minutes. You will see, for instance, we'll make some assumptions. For instance, we'll make the assumption that left and right are behaving the same. Why, why don't we try to find more complicated projections? Which is some, some well, could we try to do something in which, you know, on the left moving side you keep something like this, on the right moving side you keep something like this. Something like this, something like this. Meaning, can you get more freedom by choosing separate projections on the left and the right? For left moving for the other right. For instance, why couldn't you have, why couldn't you have, do, why could everything I said here be correct for the left moving for and also for the right moving permeons, but then that would allow an NS, NSR set. But will we just put that there is no NSR? That we improved using the boson behavior. So there are two separate questions. A, what does the boson become? There's no, no issue over that. B, can you argue that that becomes some fermion theory with the, with the projection that we have? Explain. That is cast time. Right? It's just calculation. B, there was a separate question, which triggered by Roman's question, which was, could you argue directly from the fermions that this is a projection, this is the only projection that would have made sense? That if you want a well-defined fermionic theory, you have to do such a projection. Okay? I've more or less given you such a question. But I've not been completely cast time. We will be much, I will do it much better when we Turn to the study of 10 fermions for string theory. Because this will give, enable us to get a classification of all consistent string theories. Okay, so I'll, it's essentially what I said, but a sophisticated version of what I said. I'll postpone that part to when we get to lecture. Okay, right now you see that there is at least some rough logic. It's true, by the way, that with one fermion, this is the only protection. And that fermion leads to the boson. Okay, that, yeah. Another way of saying it is that clearly this is the only bosonic radius. You see, what we want is, op is a boson radius in which all operators have dimensions that are half integer, have, have momenta in each, that are either half integer or integer. So suppose you got a quarter integer. That could not be interpreted in boson You understand? We've done the canonical quantization. We found all the states. All states have operator, have dual operators, corresponding vertex operators, with either integer or half integer momenta in each. Okay? This is this is the only compactification radius at which this happens. Okay? And the fact that we've already classified all periodic boson theories more or less tells us that there shouldn't be another consistent fermion, another consistent fermionic projection, because that would then give an equivalent uh, bosonic compactification, which doesn't exist. So if you're taking, if you take root three times, yeah, root three would be terrible, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't even rationally yeah, relate. Yeah. <laughs> you would want to have root two times some integer. But the problem is that once you do that, uh, either the momentum of winding will become less than half fraction. Yeah. No interpretation. Yeah? 
Understand? Suppose we took yeah. Suppose we took square root two times. Suppose we took square root two times times two. Okay. Then the momentum states would start. N equals one momentum state would start off as e to the power i h by four. Finish. Will never work. None of these ever. Okay? This is the theory that is due to the same operator, spectrum set. And you can check this, by the way. You can check this by computing the partition function of the Bernier with the right predictions. Okay? Computing the partition function of the Bernier theory looks at completely different calculations. You get the same, you get the same answer. Okay? Uh, it's not like this check is empty. Okay. Now, let, let me just say a little more. Why do we know now, from what we say, how do we know that things have to work? You see, in our theory, we've already shown that correlation functions of size, of bunches of size, and bunches of size bars. Okay? The correlation functions of bunches of size and bunches of size bars uh, are the same on both sides. Okay? However, in the NS sector, all operators can be built out of the operator product expansion from size. That's obvious. We know the full, uh, we know the full operator spectrum. It's products of derivatives of size. All of them clearly come from the operator product expansion. Okay? So, if size is a correlation, of all correlation functions of size are equal to all correlation functions of e to the power h, that means all correlation functions in the NS, in the NS sector, agree. Not quite all correlation functions. Well, yeah, at least, at least for the, yeah, all correlation functions. Uh, what I want to say was that we are only interested in those that are correlators of things that survive the, the projector. And, it's important that the projector, it's important that the projector is a symmetric of the theory. So if you have OP, so, so let's take the NS sector. Suppose you've got two, or two objects with minus 1 to the power n equals 1. You take the OP, you'll also get minus 1 to the power well, since the bosonic language is totally obvious. Okay. Why is it totally obvious? It's because in bosonic language, if you take e to the power i k h, k 1 h, times e to the power i k 2 h, then the leading guy will be, I mean, the guy will be e to the power i k 1 plus k 2 h. So, k 1, uh, k 1 is even and k 2 is even, k 1 plus k 2 is even. You know, similar things. All this is, we're just redoing the uh, discussion we had when we studied bosonic toroid to write a compactification of bosons. Just re saying all of that. You remember one of the things we checked was that the operator product was closed. How, how, where did that come? What, what condition did that, that give us, by the way? That the set of K is formed there? Lattice. That's the definition of a lattice, right? You take one vector, another vector, take a linear combination of that. This is a lattice. So, end of story. Okay, so we, we're not really interested in all operators in this particular example. We weren't really interested in all operators in the NS sector. We're interested in all operators that obey the projector. We start with set yeah, collections of size that obey, obey the projector. You can form, construct all operators that obey the projector. So correlation functions of all operators on the two sides are the same. Knowing that they're the same size. That's the size generator. Okay, and there's a similar story. In the um, in the uh, uh, in in the Roman sector. Okay, so these two theories are are just identical. We want to disprove it, so it's not a surprise. But anyway, it's a check. Something you can check. So the partition functions are the same, and they are. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Well, we can prove that if you are i h by two, I mean that corresponds to some operator in the Roman. Yeah, you see. We didn't, we didn't have anything to prove that because we didn't know what the operator was directly in computer language. Yes, but then how do you know the, the equivalence? You don't even know the operator. You, you've proved the equivalence in the following sense. 
You see, the Ramond sector is a vertex, is, is, is this.
stress tensor of this theory. The stress tensor of a single fermion theory was psi delta psi. After some number, keep track of it. Okay, it was psi delta but, uh, but that means it was psi 1 delta psi 1 plus psi 2 delta psi 2. Which you will believe is psi delta psi 1. Right? It's an expression which has two sides, it has a psi delta psi invariant under rotation of 1 goes to 2. So when you write it in terms of psi and psi, you remember psi 1 right? Psi 1 plus psi psi 2, that's what you want. Or you say expand this other chain. Just say x square plus y square is the same thing. Right? Okay? Uh, so, uh, this is the, this is the, uh, oh, and plus psi bar effect. Did I get the signs right here? Let me check this side. Probably get the signs right Let me just check this. Uh, psi is equal to psi 1 plus psi psi 2 plus 2. Psi bar is equal to psi 1 minus psi psi 2 psi 2.
sorry, did I get my signs? Just this one. Uh, you got the signs wrong, but that's the minus sign, right? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just, I'm sorry, I'll just make sure. Suppose I take a sign equal to 1 by 2, psi 1 plus i is psi 2, psi bar is equal to 1 by square root 2, psi 1 minus i is psi 2. Okay. Now I take del, suppose I take del psi psi. It's del psi 1 plus i del psi 2, 1 by square root 2. Um, in, so one half into psi one minus i seven. Okay, and then I want to take either plus or minus. I'll just check which. Um, psi one plus i psi two into del. I1 minus I, I del psi. Okay. Uh, I want to get just del psi 1, psi 1. This is psi 1 del psi. I need a minus. So this is the thing that's actually going to be the stress test. Is that clear? Because this will be del psi 1 psi 1 minus psi 1 del psi 1, which is same as plus del psi 1 psi 1. On the other hand, del psi 1 into minus i psi 2. Uh, and minus Minus psi 2 to del psi 1. Minus psi 2 to del psi 2. Yeah, so this is the right Sorry. So, this is this, which is the right Excellent. Sorry, sorry for that. Okay, now let's do this OP. And if we do this OP, what do we get? We get, well, um, We get what we get from the contraction first. Okay, so we get a one by two seconds. Not a good one to say. Okay, so we get this plus. So now let's do this okay. It looks very different. It looks very different because you get a singular term multiplying everything. What is the singular term? This is something we've done many times. Okay. It's i minus log z, it's e power minus log z, but i with minus i is a plus, so it's e power minus log z, but it's not log z, it's log z, log 2z because separation is 2z. Okay, so we get 1 over 2z times a normal order, it's e pi h of z uh, minus h of minus z. Now, within the normal order sign, you can treat these things as numbers. You can just Taylor expand. Okay? So, in the Taylor expansion, what do we get? So, you get 1 by 2z 
times um, e to the power, I'm telling expanding inside. So this is 2z del h. Okay? And then the second order terms cancel. The second order is even in z. So they cancel. Okay? So if I'm only interested in terms up to second order, which I'm only interested in because I want the overall z, that's it. And so then we get 1 by 2z into 1 plus i into 2z del h. Okay? Uh, minus half into 2z del h the whole thing squared. Remember this the stress tensor is proportional to this and the stress tensor is proportional to this. If we kept track of the numbers and if I know this, the numbers, right? This will just match. Okay. So you see an example of how you can find the Fourier map between operators in the theory. Starting by knowing the map between just psi psi bar, e to the pi e to the bar minus. Just use the OP. And that gives it that allows you to deduce the map between all operators. Including in particular the stress tensor, and we just check that the stress tensor match it. Okay, so this is this is the game of bosonization. I've spent more time on it than I should have. Uh, any questions or comments? Oh, um, okay. now. So far we've spent two or three lectures just talking about the analogue of x in the conformity. But when we were trying to study um, uh, when we were trying to study uh, uh, when we were trying to study uh, string theory, we needed more than x. We needed hosts. We needed uh, B and C. Okay? So what we're going to now do is to turn our attention to studying the analogs of B and C for the hook. But in order to do that, it will be convenient. Um, it will be convenient to package this disc discussion we've had about the Bose, Bose on the Fermion theory in the language of what's called superspace. Okay? Then that same packaging with the Bose, with the coasts will allow us to discover what the super what the supersymmetric part is of the coasts. Okay. So let's study the post Fermi theory in superspace. So our theory is that of X and Psi. Okay? And in this discussion. 
discussion, we're going to use a rescale x exactly like h, just so that we don't have to keep track of uh, alpha primes uh, by, by two zero. So our the normal x we use was x, but I'm going to define x is equal to square root of alpha prime by two x that. Or maybe I'll just call it I call the h of that confused. I'll call the x to be. Okay. H is the boson I used for me. Okay? And then what I do is the following. On the world sheet of the string, I have this B2Z and so on. I will now, beyond the friction, invent a super code, a Fermi Ami code. And invent a super field, a capital X, which is X tilde plus theta times psi, in these conventions, theta times psi bar. minus and sigma plus. They anti-commute with each other and they square to zero. Okay, so there are objects that you're familiar with that have these properties. Any objects with these properties will do. No need to obsess about them, but it's not, it's not some crazy stuff. Matrices will do. They op think of theta and theta as operators on a universe space. Then the fact that they square to zero is not something. Matrices do that. Okay, matrices which are non-zero can easily square to zero. What's the big deal? Okay? So think of them as theta, uh, sigma plus and sigma minus, whatever you will be interested. Okay? You also know how to integrate. Um, you also know how to integrate uh, fermions and differentiate. 
equivalent. Basically, if, uh, uh, differentiation integration is the same. Differentiation, just defined by a set of rules. Derivative of a plus b theta with respect to theta is b. Derivative of a plus b theta with respect to theta bar is 0. Derivative of a plus b theta plus c theta bar plus d theta theta bar is b plus d theta bar and so on. You are all familiar with the word obsessor. Okay, and the integration is defined to be there. So, this set of formal objects which you can manipulate. The point of these formal objects is that these formal objects define an algebra. Okay, firstly, it's totally obvious uh, that q squared is equal to zero. That's right. Uh, Q squared is equal to, uh, let's, let's do both of D by D theta uh, minus theta B by D Z times T by D theta minus theta D by D Z. Let's check what this is. Okay? D by D theta squared is equal to zero. Simply because no object could have theta squared. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, d by d theta on d by dz is minus d by dz uh, plus theta d by d theta. So what about d by d theta acting on theta delta? Correct. They're just used. You know, this can then act on some function. Of Q because anti commutator is just twice, twice square of Q. Okay. So I computed the anti commutator of Q with itself. Now I'm going to compute the anti commutator of Q with d by d theta. Okay. So let's do that. 
So that is this calculation, but with this side flip minus the other way around. Plus the, plus the other way around. Okay, so what changes? This guy with this guy uh, being del by del z with a plus sign, so we get del by del z. Then we continue to get one additional term which is plus theta del by del z. Uh, del, sorry, del by del, by del theta del by del z. That's when this derivative goes through here. Because this was a plus. Last time also we got a plus. Ah, we get a minus. Thank you. Because we got through the theta. Okay. Then we get uh, uh, this term is minus. With this minus, that's not changing. We get a minus 2. Okay? And then this term continues to be 0 because theta squared is 0. Now, if then we get plus where this was plus and this was minus. Okay? So, where this was plus and this was minus, this term, this term with this term, um, flip side. And this term with this term, flip side. So, whatever we got, we get minus of that. We can see it. Okay? And so we compute that Q of this is equal to zero. So, we define another interesting derivative. The interesting derivative is this d derivative, which has the property that the anti commutes of Q. Why is it interesting? This, uh, this d derivative is interesting, I mean, anti commute, the fact that it's interesting, uh, the fact that anti commutes with Q allows us easily to construct Lagrangians that are invariant under the symmetry generated by the operator. Okay? So if you make a Lagrangian entirely out of d derivatives of your basic fields, then this Lagrangian will enjoy invariance. Okay, something good will happen to this Lagrangian. I mean, the work. suppose I act with a d derivative on a field that has a certain Q transformation property. Okay? That field will continue to have the same Q transformation. Okay? So, suppose I take... Um, I've got some field, let's say some X. It transforms in a certain way under super symmetry. Okay? Then D theta of X transforms in the same way under super symmetry.
On the other hand, if you want to get the side. You get two dots. You can only add a theta. You want something with theta, theta tilde. So you can add something with a theta tilde. So that's psi tilde. Psi tilde. And some i. You have to do it here. Okay. Now we can, now we can look at the. Uh, look at the. Uh, uh, you can also ask what is. Um, what is delta psi tilde and delta? Okay? Delta psi tilde is sort of like f. Okay? And uh, there's nothing left to us. Then you flip tilde out, you know, this gives something. So why not the theta and delta acting on psi tilde? Um, why not? Because that was theta, theta, tilde. No, no, no. Right? Oh, but you said I may have messed up the delta f. Yes. Delta f, you're right. Delta f, I could also have had... Delta f. Uh, delta uh, no, no, no. I could also have had... Um, Theta del Z. Um, I did this wrong, right? Now I want the theta. Uh, oh yeah, it could be a prime. Sorry, uh, I del Z side. Yes. I del Z. It just comes from the fact that d by d theta, and theta commutes with something. Theta d by d theta. I, see, 
So you just put it d by d theta, theta just outside here, and then use the minus signs that you get in having the action of this. Okay? So the, the, pro the products of these just transform, you know, good. So this also transforms with the action of a cube. So if you got something that transforms like action of a cube, and you integrate it, you get zero. Why? Because the transformation action of a cube is either a total derivative theta. Ah, if you integrate it, if you take some product of superfields or d theta derivatives of the superfields. Let me finish the sentence. If you take some products of these superfields or d theta derivatives of the superfields and integrate it, d to the derivative. Let's check. X started out as like as Y, which was dimensionless. Okay? So this has a dimension 0. What is the dimension of this B? Hmm? It's like? Theta is dimension half. Theta is dimension half. D is dimension. Dimension one. So length dimension one meets up mass dimension one. 
you get something better. Okay, last thing we do today's lecture. The last thing we do in today's lecture is to expand this out and see that we recover just free goes on that bit of a trivial action. But it's already useful and you will see it's even more useful when we look at the course because it might be hard to guess it. Okay, it's not hard to guess that a free goes on is super partner of Bill Cormier. Bit hard. Okay, so now let's expand this out. Pain in the neck, let's do it. Okay. So, I, what I want to do is, I want the integral here. So, I want the term with theta and theta bar in this. Okay, so what kind of terms am I going to get? Let's see, at least a What terms will involve two y's? Clearly, the term which was theta d by dz and the y and theta bar tilde b by d z bar. These are the two terms. Because the two the two y's came without any theta theta bar. You want a theta theta bar so you this integral. It's the only thing that can happen. Okay. So the term the two y's will be um, yeah. Del z y del z bar y. Great. That was the free term of the Okay. Now, let's look at the terms. Now, let's look at the terms with two sides. Okay. Psi came inside an X with one theta. Okay. So, um, if I want that psi here, yeah, I can't use uh, the multiplication with, this, with theta. The only thing I can do is derivative with theta. Z. So I'll get del z uh, psi. Okay? And then, here, I should use the term that multiplies with the uh, uh, theta bar. Okay, so I'll get a sign. So, but d and theta del z. So, theta will add with theta theta psi. You don't have theta theta tilde. I want a theta theta tilde. So, in this, I'm x. This is the same x, right? In this, there was a theta psi. D tilde has a theta tilde. So I use the term that is theta tilde d by dz. Sorry, d by dz. Yeah. Theta tilde. What? What is it? Correct. Uh, I use the term that is adjustment. Okay, so I'm wrong here. I want. Uh, in the first term, I did, did I do that part right? I want, I wanted psi. I used. I, 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 ah, this was not. This was not. This was this, right? Yes. And then this was del z bar. Sorry. You see, because sorry, here I I, I, I had a term theta psi. I use the term that's d by d theta, so that's just a sign. Here I had a term that was theta psi, and I use the term that was theta bar, d by dz, so that gives this. Okay, similarly there will be a psi tilde, del z, psi tilde. Okay? Now we can ask what other terms can we have? Okay. Clearly we're only going to get terms with even numbers of size because even number of size means even numbers of thetas okay so what else could you get um, everything is quadratic so uh, we've looked at this what else could you have possibly got uh, you could possibly have got 
something like a y type thing. Yes. It's the only other thing that, or an f type. First thing, let's check f. FF is there because we can use the d by d theta in here, in this, in this and the d by d theta bar in this. And so we will get an f square. Okay? But if you want to get an f times. Uh, if you want to get f times x, let's see if that works. Okay? Um, you see, x always comes with a theta or a theta bar. Because x in the original expansion had nothing. So when you add the d on it, for instance, the d by d theta kills it. So only the term multiplying the theta comes. And then you can't also get the f. Okay, so suppose we get, so suppose we get, uh, so for instance from this term we can get del z x. Okay? Uh, this comes with a theta. Now, we might have wanted to get an f from here huh? with only a theta bar. But there's no such thing. There's a term with only theta. But that's, that's no good. Okay. So, if you do it a little more seriously than we've done, now you find these both. This term is again any term for the bosons. These two terms are again any terms for fermions. And this is a kinetic term for F. But a kinetic term with no derivatives, you know, the field is not there. The path integral has an e to the power minus f squared, nothing happening, just integrate the Okay, so f was an auxiliary field. Okay, so it was basically not there. Okay, we integrate it out for you. Okay, and uh, so this defines the uh, free boson plus free fermion theory in super space. Okay, last thing, this is really last thing. Okay, okay. I mean, just really last thing. But tell you about it. Um, you know, correlation functions in uh, an ordinary uh, Poincaré invariant theory only depends on z1 minus z2. Okay? Now, correlation functions are going to be invariant under Q. They have to be invariant under some combination of z1, z2, theta, and thetas that I need it not just by Momentum, which is what tells you that it has to be invariant under Z1. Mm -hmm. But also annihilated by Qs. Okay? So, so how, how do you deny a deduce that this was a function of Z1 and Z2? It's because Pz1 plus Pz2 at the annihilated function. Pz1 was d by dz1, Pz2 was d by dz2. So d by dz1 plus d by dz2 at annihilated. That only works its function of z1 minus z2. Now similarly, we want, so, so we know that everything is some function of z1 minus z2, theta 1 and theta. And we want to find those combinations of these coordinates that are annihilated uh, by q theta 1 plus q theta. On this should be equal to z. That's the requirement here. Is that clear? Okay. Now let's remember what q theta 1 and q theta 2 were. So that's del by del theta 1 minus theta 1 del by del z1 plus del by del theta 2 minus theta 2 del by del z2 into some function of these. Okay has to be equal to zero. Can I leave it as an exercise for you to check that the combinations that work are Z1 and Z2 plus or minus and I have to check.
minus the delta. Construct a sup take the superconformal algebra, the OPs of T and Tf, and put that in superspace. Namely, construct a superfield P, which is equal to Tf plus theta and T. Construct an expression that which 
expanded in components gives you what you have. Aren't these two related by B? What? These two should be related by B. Which two? The possibilities that you're that one manages. What do you mean related by? In the sense like the B theta one plus theta two of one should give the other because that's also a possibility, right? If you have this, D of this will also be invariant in Q. Yeah, I think you're right. So uh, you if you take B, B, yeah, I think you're right. I think that if you take B of this, you get this. So let's check one, one sanity check. B reduces the, I mean, increases mass dimension by half. So there's a mass dimension minus one, there's a mass dimension. I, I think you're right. I mean, I see some combination. 